In this second video on effect sizes, we go through the process of calculating and interpreting an effect size in a two independent samples t-test. Let's return to our hypothetical example looking at sports involvement and self-confidence in high school students. Students involved in sports had a mean of 83 on the Mason self-confidence scale, and those not involved in sports only had a mean of 73. Now, we'll also say that the pooled standard deviation was 20. Again, we won't worry about anything else because we're really not going through the entire set of calculations and hypothesis testing. We're just calculating the effect size. Our effect size is equal to x bar 1 minus x bar 2 divided by the pooled standard deviation. So that works out to be our effect size, technically hedges g, is equal to 83 minus 73 divided by 20, or 10 divided by 20, or 0 0.50. An effect size of 0 0.50 tells us that the difference between our sample means is equal to one half standard deviation. Now, based on Cohen's guidelines, that would be a medium effect size. People often stop there, but there's one more thing we can do to help us understand our effect size and the magnitude of our effect in more real-world terms. To see that, I've created a graph showing the distribution of scores for the two hypothetical populations that we've sampled. Self-confidence appears along the x-axis. The blue distribution reflects youth not engaged in sports, and notice that their mean is 73. And the red distribution reflects the youth who are engaged in sports, and notice that their mean is 83. Now to start, I'm just going to focus on the distribution for kids who are in the no sports group, the blue distribution. But we'll keep the distribution for the kids who are engaged in sports up as well. Now, as we move along, you may start to anticipate where I'm going with this. First, let's replace the raw scores with z-scores. How many standard deviations a student is above or below the mean, based on the no sports group. Now, as a reminder, a score of 73, which is the mean, would have a z-score of 0. And remember, our standard deviation was 20, so a z-score of positive 1 would be 73 plus 20, or 93. And a z-score of negative 1 would be 73 minus 20, or 53. So if we simply replace the original Mason self-confidence scale scores on the x-axis with z-scores, we get this. Nothing has changed other than the scaling on our x-axis. Pretty straightforward so far. Let's shift gears a bit and take a look at the distribution for the students who were engaged in sports, the red distribution in our figure. Now, what was their average again? It was 83. So let's add a line for the mean self-confidence score for the students who played sports. The mean for the students in sports is right here. Notice that visually this makes sense. Remember our effect size was 0 0.50, indicating that there's a one-half standard deviation difference between our means. And what do we see? There's a one-half standard deviation difference between our means. The mean for the students involved in sports lines up perfectly with a z-score of 0 0.50 relative to the no sports mean. Now, let's kick it up a notch bam, and look at both distributions at the same time. Specifically, how does the average student involved in a sport do compared to the students who are not involved in a sport? So. Let's look at youth involved in sports with a self-confidence score right at the average for students involved in sports. 
we can see that their self-confidence score is higher than most of the students who were not involved in sports, but we can do better than that. What's the percentage of students not involved in sports with lower self-confidence scores? To make this more clear, let's shade in the group of students I'm talking about. The black dashed line represents the score for the average student involved in sports. The blue distribution is all the students not involved in sports. And we want to know the percentage of those blue, no sports students who fall below the black dashed line. They're in the shaded in area in the blue distribution. So we want to determine the percentage of blue, no sports students who are in the shaded in area. Now, how do we do that? Remember, our z-scores at the bottom were based on the no sports students. And we saw that the mean for the students involved in sports was equal to a z of 0 0.50, our effect size. So the question is simply, what's the area of the distribution that falls below a z of 0.50? We can look that up on a table or use Excel or something and find that it is 0.6915 or 69.15%. Now, there are a few ways you can describe this. For example, you could say that the average youth involved in sports had a self-confidence score higher than 69.15% of youth not involved in sports, right? Again, the average youth in sports is indicated by the black dashed line, and they're higher than all of that shaded in blue area in the distribution of children not involved in sports. Alternatively, you could phrase this as the average youth involved in sports had a self-confidence score that was at the 69.15th percentile for youth not involved in sports. Basically, that's saying the same thing, except it frames it around percentile ranks. It's a little complicated, but I hope this makes sense. It takes us from being stuck trying to figure out what 10 means in any practical sense to thinking about it as a respectable one-half standard deviation difference. It's also helpful to be able to see that the average child in one group is at the same level as a child who's at the 69th point something percentile in the other group. Or that a child at the 69th percentile in that group is at the same level as a child who's only at the 50th percentile in this group. It's certainly more informative than just 10 points. Now, you may have already noticed that the process and detail I went through is actually a little more than you really need to do. But I wanted to walk you through some additional steps in order to hopefully illustrate exactly what we mean by the effect size and how we can calculate the percentile for one distribution based on the mean of another. In the end, once you know the effect size is equal to 0.5, it is telling you that the difference between means is 0.5 standard deviations. In this case, we knew the mean for sports kids was 0.5 standard deviations higher than the mean for kids not in sports. So based on the effect size of 0.5, we know that we can look up the percentage of scores below a z-score of 0.5 and it will tell us that the mean for the higher group is at the 69.15 percentile of the lower group. So this wraps up our introduction to effect sizes. To go full circle, be certain to never, ever, ever, ever interpret your test statistic, your t-score or p-value, as an indication of the magnitude of your effect. They tell you whether the effect is large statistically, meaning how likely it is that the effect is real, not just random chance. Large samples will give you large test statistics and small p-values, even if the magnitude of the effect is small. 
Effect sizes tell you how big the effect is in real terms. They tell you the magnitude of the effect. <laughs> but they don't tell you how likely it is that what you're seeing is real. And that's okay. That's the job of the test statistic. In that sense, you can think of the effect size as the Robin to the t-test Batman working together to take on the null hypothesis. Okay? Take care.